Ten years ago, BC High created the Arupe Division, a middle school committed to understanding boys and helping them grow into good men, a place where they enjoy competitive athletic teams, intramural pursuits, and a wide range of clubs and activities that tap into their passions. A strong community that challenges them to be leaders and a rigorous academic program that matches the strengths and interests of adolescent boys. A school where boys can thrive. We believe our students learn best when they can connect the learning to themselves and to the world. We want to make the learning personal. In the case of seventh grade geography, our teachers created the City Project so that students wouldn't just be thinking about geography, they'd be addressing the problems that people face around the world. We know our students learn by doing, and in planning and building their cities, in applying smart growth principles, in identifying the best energy sources for their cities, they are doing. And as they do, they are learning 21st century skills. They're analyzing problems, they're collaborating with each other to come up with creative solutions to these problems, and then they're effectively communicating their solutions to everyone else. It's definitely a lot bigger project because it's year-round and it's the first project I've ever done that's throughout three different classes. We had to learn how to cooperate and how to make the city like best for its citizens. It's been fun because like you're able to create what's the city that you want, like the city that you think is perfect. We were pretty much working on this project the whole year, one way or another. We're always studying something new and learning a different way to make our city better. It's a lot different. It's a lot longer and bigger than the other projects I've ever done. It's like the hardest project ever. In Arupe, the focus is on learning skills. Content is the vehicle that creates the interest, but the skills are the focus. The boys learn traditional skills, such as reading and writing. And through the City Project, the students have myriad opportunities to learn 21st century skills, such as collaboration, problem solving, creative thinking, public speaking, and technology skills. Problem solving is uh, tantamount. Uh, our students need to be able to address the many different issues of our world. And the younger that they are, they start trying to look at things from a critical lens. They start to be able to um, apply their knowledge, to be able to solve an issue, the better. I really like using the groups for the city project. I think that coupled with the presentation aspect is, makes it very real world for them. There's only so many papers you can write, there's only so much you can learn from writing papers, but working together in a group and working with the same group all year can really get you to figure out what are other people's styles and how you relate to that and how you can function as a team. At BC High, there's always this Jesuit piece behind it, thinking about being a man for others, and looking at social justice, and uh, you know, having seventh graders come in and really work together, you're working towards a greater good. Before building their cities, the boys study the principles of smart growth. They think about how people will live, shop, and work in their cities. They study the best transportation systems. They look at real cities that have successful plans, cities with mixed-use developments, with places for pedestrians and cyclists, green spaces, urban farming. Parents and alumni who are architects, designers, city planners, and developers show the students real-life examples of city planning. 
seventh grade, our foundation is in chemistry. Uh, students learn about phase changes, they learn about states of matter, and we take this foundation of chemistry and apply it to the city project. When talking about chemical reactions, we apply that to energy. How do we use chemical reactions to gain different types of energy? How can we then use that energy to power our cities? All literature teaches us about the human experience and teaches us about people that we really might not know anything about. So it's hard for them to sometimes think, okay, now I'm an engineer or now I'm a social worker without learning about a lot of other people's experiences. So the great thing that we can tie in um, novels and right now we're looking at some short stories too and poetry is the idea that it teaches us about human beings that are different. With our city, we try to make it as perfect as possible, even though perfect isn't really possible. Our city's in South Africa. It's Viridian City and there's like good colleges. We have a nice beach, like a sandy beach along the coast. We have many things for the people living there, like a ski resort. We have a movie theater. We have so many fun things for them. We have like a city center where all the shops are, and then we have like on the outside there's a bunch of houses. On all the roofs there's either going to be some sort of roof garden or solar panels on every roof. I think it's made for people who would like, they wouldn't want a boring life, it's sort of like a fun city. Every person matters and every person has a place. And so we always are exploring like, you know, what is your role, what, what are you doing um, to keep constantly pushing to make this a better community. At first, students create their cities freely, much like some of the utopian cities seen in the novels they read in English. But this changes with the reaping. Each city is randomly assigned a disaster that causes chaos on environmental, economic, and social levels. The reaping is a grand event. The students have no idea what is coming, which reflects the sudden and changing nature of the real world. The first couple of days uh, were rough. Uh, the, the reaping really kind of puts them out of their comfort zone and the kids were, uh, they were a little bit frustrated. To be able to put the disaster in and twist things around and change it a little bit is exciting and it, it gives them something to actually work with um, and really see if their city can stand up to the problem that they that they face. We had this thing called dangerous desertification. That's where like in our city there's deserts and the deserts are expanding and they're like taking over our water and our crops. So we have like uh, food and water shortages. Our city was affected by a drought and when we first got it uh, we thought it was pretty easy because it was just a drought you know we'd import water and you know conserve water in different ways but we found out that there were a lot of conflicts with our people and what they thought of the drought. We had them make these these webs so they could see that even though there was this one problem uh, it sort of had a ripple effect and effect caused other problems in areas that they didn't even think possible. One thing we did is we made a like arrangement and deal with another group. Their problem was that they had a lot of debts, so they are going to give us some, some of their extra food, but um, we're giving them money which they're going to put towards their debts. We're hoping that they really applied what they learned throughout the year uh, to then protect their city and still grow their city and live the, these utopian values that they've created even after something disastrous or some type of reaping happens. Today you're presenting. Uh, are you nervous for it? I'm not really nervous. I'm more excited and kind of anxious to do it. Um, a little bit. I'm like pretty excited too because it's like we've been working on it all year and I really want to like show them what we've done. Well, yes and no. I mean, we've been working on this for so long. It's, it's nice to see it all come like together in the end. But yeah, it's, it's nervous presenting to administration people.
The presentations at the end of the year are a rite of passage for the seventh graders. Having planned and created their cities, then survived the disasters of the reaping, the boys put the final touches on their creations. Filled with excitement and some anxiety, they display their cities to teachers, parents, and peers. Using the presentation skills they learned in drama class and honed in many other disciplines throughout the year, they explain the wonders, the innovations, and the challenges of their cities. At the end of this day, there's not one winner like in a spelling bee. When the boys walk out, there is pride on every face. They are passionate about their cities. They have organized their information, and they succeeded in their presentations. They may have arrived in the morning filled with anxiety and nerves. They leave with a sense of accomplishment and a great pride in their creation. Yes, utopias don't exist. And I think the city project allows them to try and make their little microcosm world a slightly better place.